high rate anaerobic wastewater treatment methods, metabolic pathway through which the anaerobic decomposition occurs that is conversion of organic matter in the water to into biogas which consists of mixture of methane and carbon dioxide. Over this uh, past many decades, the process of anaerobic digestion has been used principally for the concentrated waste water such as uh, biological sludge uh, for the stabilization. However, with the growing energy crisis especially which happened in 1973, later on in 1978 and the recent decades, uh, for past two decades we have growing concern of the energy security and energy uh, requirement and that has triggered the interest in the technologies which can produce energy or those which requires less energy. And in this regard, we had seen that one of the biggest advantage which the anaerobic process offers is that it does not require any, any energy consumption, rather it gives out energy in the form of biogas which has methane in it. Therefore, this has created a large number of interest to apply or make use of this technology for the wastewater treatment that is to as a substitute for the aerobic biological treatment process itself. And uh, it was thought that if the anaerobic process can be used directly for wastewater treatment, it will substantially not only reduce the energy consumption, but rather it will contribute to the energy security of the region. So, a lot of research was done starting from 1970s uh, till date and right now we can say with confidence that anaerobic treatment technology has matured itself for the wastewater treatment itself. Now, the basic fundamental of working of any anaerobic uh, high rate anaerobic treatment technology is cell immobilization. That is, we try to retain the cell or the solid biomass which actually is the viable organisms within the system without changing the hydraulic retention time of the system. That is, we have high solid retention time and less hydraulic retention time. The genesis of this is that, the we have seen that the anaerobic process is slow because the generation time of the organisms which are responsible for anaerobic degradation is very high. It means that, if in a system we only take out the clarified liquid and do not take out the biomass which consists of the active organisms, then what we are doing is that we are increasing the solid retention time to a very high level and those organisms which has long generation time can are still available in significant quantity within the system and hydraulic retention time remains more or less the same or uh, less than that was originally present. So, the basic concept of all the high rate anaerobic treatment technology is the cell immobilization through which we have tremendously increased the solid retention time without increasing the hydraulic retention time. So, what are the technologies which are there which are able to achieve high SRT without increasing the HRT which I would say the types of processes which are most commonly used are anaerobic fixed film fixed bed reactor, I am abbreviating as A triple F B R. This is anaerobic fixed film fixed bed reactor. The other process which is most commonly used is a flow anaerobic sludge blanket reactor commonly termed as U A S B reactor. The other technology which is used is fluidized bed reactor and there is another thing which is known as hybrid reactor which is a combination of these two together which are which is used. There are many other uh, configurations like high rate anaerobic uh, rotating biological contactor so on and so forth, but these are the four configurations which are most widely used for anaerobic treatment of waste water. Initially, the anaerobic treatment of industrial effluents were done like distilleries, sugar, tanneries. Uh, the industry which produce BOD greater than 1000 milligrams per liter. Nowadays, the technology has been matured enough to be used directly even for the domestic sewage that is for low strength wastewater also. So, I will briefly introduce you all of these technologies. 
I if I draw an analogy then anaerobic fixed film fixed bed reactor is just like a trickling filter that we have discussed under the aerobic process. So, basically this particular reactor again consists of porous media which is fixed and on this media the anaerobic organisms get developed. So, what we do is that we have feed at the bottom it can be upflow and downflow mode in a upflow mode we have feed at the bottom then we have gas collector and treated effluent is taken from the top. So, from here we take the effluent from here we feed this is a fixed media this is a completely enclosed system this is a gas collector from where the biogas is taken out and the effluent is taken out of the system from the top. So, this is broadly the system configuration of anaerobic fixed film fixed bed reactor. So, let me explain you the, the process it is a stationary fixed film reactor where the cells are deliberately attached to large size solid support. So, this is a large size solid support the reactor has a biofilm support structure for biomass immobilization. So, these organisms remain attached to the system for very very long time and that is how the cell immobilization take place. Wastewater distribution at the bottom for uniform distribution of wastewater and effluent draw off and recycling facilities. The fixed film reactor offers distinct advantage such as simplicity of construction, elimination of mixing mechanical mixing, better stability at high loading rates and capacity to withstand large toxic shocks. In addition these reactors can tolerate sudden shocks load at constant hydraulic loading and recover normal performance within few days if the alkalinity is high enough to maintain the pH above 6.2. So, even if there are toxic shock loads and the pH is greater than 6.2 because here the organisms are attached to the media th therefore, it is able to immobilize itself and these organisms do not get easily washed away if there are certain variations in the shocks. The reactor can process different waste streams with little compromise in capacity and can adapt readily to changes in temperature. This is important for installations where wastewater characteristics change rapidly. The reactor startup can be very quick after period of starvation that is uh, one day or two days to reach maximum capacity after three weeks of starvation. So, that is very good for the industries which has a variable load and also seasonal industries because cells remain immobilized here and within few days one or two days time it can be restarted. The main limitation of this design is that the reactor volume is relatively large compared to other high rate technologies that we have just mentioned because the volume which is occupied by the media itself. So, media has its own volume so the overall volume gets increased. Uh, another common problem associated with this type of reactor is the clogging due to the non-uniform growth of biofilms and high suspended solid concentration in the wastewater. So, just like trickling filter as I mentioned that it is a choking problem which can happen. Non-uniform growth and consequent clogging occurs especially at the influent entry. Some measures to combat this problem include recirculation of effluent just like in trickling filter we can have a sump where the raw waste water and the treated effluent can enter and it is then fed into the uh, trickling filter. So, that is one way that is recirculation of effluent for developed and relatively thin film so that slogging of biomass can happen. The media which is used may be activated carbon, PVC support, hard rock particles, ceramic rings uh, are the ones which are commonly used, but of course, PVC support material offers very high voidage for a given volume. So, it has more surface area to volume ratio. Reactor configuration can be upflow and downflow and in fact, upflow mode what is shown you 
here is upflow mode, downflow mode is just opposite where feed is from the top and affluent is taken from the bottom. With waste containing large amount of hard to digest suspended solids, recirculation aids in degradation since it keeps the solid in suspension. So, high hydraulic loading can be achieved. So, this is how the anaerobic fixed film fixed bed reactor functions. Next is a flow anaerobic sludge blanket reactor. Typically, it is a very elongated or we can say tall structure which consists of influent distribution line where the waste incoming waste water is uniformly distributed. Then immediately above it, we have a blanket of granules. So, this is the zone where we have very high active granules which is nothing but the cluster of active organisms together in the form of a lump. So, the what happens the wastewater passes through it, these remains within the system that is how the cells remain immobilized, then it has a gas lock solid liquid separator. So, all the gas bubbles get diverted and collected in a gas holder and the treated effluent the top portion acts as a sedimentation tank and the treated effluent is taken from the top. So, here we have feed, here is the treated effluent. So, USB technology is being used extensively for a large number of different types of industrial effluents. The system uses granules as a means of achieving high mean cell residence time or SRT, thereby achieving highly cost effectively designs. USB process have found a variety of application in recent years in treatment of high, low and medium strength wastewater and a variety of other substrates. The process has been applied to wastewater generated from a wide cross section of industries such as distilleries, food processing unit, tanneries, etcetera in addition to the municipal wastewater. In fact, in under the Ganga action plan uh, at many of the sewage treatment plant, this USB reactor has been installed. The, if the major advantage is that technology has less investment requirement compared to fixed film fixed bed reactor which we have discussed because it does not require any inert media. Therefore, the overall volume requirement is less and capital cost is less. However, it has its own disadvantage. Dis disadvantage is that the startup period of USB reactor is longer than that of other types of reactor configurations and it requires sufficient amount of time for granular seed sludge to form. Normally, what we do we bring some amount of granular seed sludge from the existing operating plants for the startup and significant washout during the initial phases of process occurs and even if there are some toxic shock logs or variable flow rate uh, or variable loading, then also the granules has a tendency to get disintegrate and the process gets disruptive. So, on one side it requires less capital cost, but on the other side it is a highly sensitive process. So, basically it consists of a gas solid liquid separator which I had just shown over here to retain anaerobic sludge within the reactor and influent distribution system and effluent draw facility. With a sophisticated feed inlet distribution system in a USB reactor, effluent recycling is not necessary because we are able to distribute uniformly. Otherwise, effluent has to be recycled partly. So, this is how the USB reactor functions. Next is anaerobic fluidized bed system. Basically, uh, the system consists of another media where the bacterial biomass remains attached just like in a fixed film media, but here the media is different and it remains rather than fixed in a fluidized state. So, this is gas holder from here we feed from the bottom. What I am showing you is the section of all these technologies effluent is taken out from the top and sometimes part of the effluent has to be recycled back into the system and what is there from bottom to up to a certain height 
is a fluidized bed, sludge bed. Fluidized sludge bed. So, in the anaerobic fluidized bed system, the media for bacterial attachment and growth is kept in the fluidized state through the application of high afflow velocities, which are normally achieved by recycling the effluent. So, part of the treated effluent is recycled, which is added to the incoming waste water to have large discharge for a given area that is high velocity is achieved. Increasing recycling allows the process to tend towards the operational characteristics of a completely mixed system. The design of a fluidized bed thus consists of a wastewater distributor, a me media support structure, head space, effluent draw, uh, draw off, media itself and the recycling facilities. The thickness of biofilm is controlled by the bed regeneration and by the size and density of inert media in combination with a flow velocity. Excess sludge can be removed from the top of the fluidized bed, where the biofilm tends to have maximum thickness. Fluidized bed technology is more effective than anaerobic filter technology as it favors the transport of microbial cell from bulk to the surface and thus enhances the contact between microorganisms and the substrate. These reactors have several advantage over anaerobic filters. They are less likely to clog and have low hydraulic head loss combined with better hydraulic circulation. They are able to operate at lower required retention times and higher loading rates and have a greater surface area per unit of reactor volume. Finally, the capital cost is lower due to reduced reactor volumes. However, the recycling of effluent may be necessary to achieve bed expansion. Thus, stationary packed bed technology is adequate for treatment of easily biodegradable wastewater or where the high COD removal is not required, whereas fluidized bed technology is, is especially suitable for treatment of hazardous waste recalcitrant composition. So, the choice between anaerobic fixed film fixed bed reactor and anaerobic fluidized bed reactor that is A F F F B R anaerobic fixed film fixed bed reactor and anaerobic fluidized bed reactor is this that is we use anaerobic fixed film fixed bed reactor for the treatment of easily degradable wastewater or where high COD removal is not required whereas fluidized bed reactor is required in the cases where the high COD removal is re desired or recalcitrant compositions is there. The hybrid reactor I am just drawing as the name itself suggests it is a combination of two reactors that is fixed film reactor and the uh, USB reactor. So, at the bottom we have the sludge bed just like a USB reactor, then we have kind of a solid liquid gas separators. So, from here we are taking out the gas and this is the line for drawing the liquid. So, effluent is taken from the top and in between we have fixed film media. So, what I am showing with the hedges is a fixed film media. So, this is a gas collector, this is a fixed film media, this is a blanket of sludge and uh, so, this is with is a anaerobic filter. So, this is broadly the hybrid reactor. The hybrid reactor is actually an improved version of USB system and combines the merits of the USB and fixed film reactors. This reactor offers strong resistance to disturbances 
such as large fluctuating fluctuations in the loading rate. As most of the microbes adhere firmly to the support media, any change in fermentation conditions would not temporarily affect the microbes. Even at high upflow velocity, the effluent uh, biofilm is not washed away because of the presence of anaerobic filter at the top. A successful phase separation can be achieved with this type of a design. Thus, not only does the hybrid reactor provide best environment for growth of both type of organisms like acidogens and methogens, it also overcomes the limitations normally experienced in the purely USB system, because this USB system cannot take the fluctuating load or uh, shock loads, uh, which is which this can take because of the presence of anaerobic filter at the top. The hybrid reactor can be used for wide variety of industrial effluents and it is possible to maintain the desired pH conditions for both the acidants and methogens. The inert matrix material increases the retention of the granular sludge and prevents the washout of the microbial population. By choosing a suitable highly porous packing material with large specific surface, the addition of microbes can be greatly improved and the concentration of activated sludge in the reactors can be considerably enhanced. The rate of mass transfer is also higher resulting in the increased contact time between feed and microbes. As the material which immobilizes the microbes can capture most of the uh, sludge when slurry passes through the reactor, the loss of the sludge is minimized. Apart from the advantages of simplicity in operation and design, hybrid reaction reactor also works out to be more economical than fixed film reactor at the industrial state. And one of the hybrid reactor system has been installed in Dorala Sugar Works near to Delhi area. So, this is about the uh, hybrid reactor. So, what we have seen is that with these type of technological configurations, we are able to immobilize the cell resulting in high solid retention time, which has helped us to treat the waste water directly by the anaerobic process. This is a great energy uh, uh, boost for uh, in the field of waste water technology. Therefore, the government of India has tried to promote the technology in India through various means. For over two decades, anaerobic digestion has been used in India as low cost method of treatment or for the stabilization of sewage sludge or sewage. India is perhaps only uh, next only to China as far as anaerobic digestion of animal dung in small scale plant is concerned. To meet growing energy needs of the country, the government of India has placed growing emphasis on new and renewable sources of energy. As, it, and as we can see with the increase outlay earmarked for in the 7th plan, 8th plan, 9th plan and 10th 5 year plan. In fact, dur from during 8th plan period about rupees uh, 3.2 billion was allocated for permission, promotion of biogas through the concreted effort of MNRE. And this 3.2 billion dollar was in the 8th plan, which has increased almost by 20 percent in the subsequent 5 year plans. So far, in India we have 2.7 million biogas plants which has been installed and there is a further potential to install about 1500 million such plants. The government of India uh, has um, as a national apex, MNRE is the national apex agency for providing policy guidelines and directions for harnessing bioenergy from urban, municipal and industrial waste. In fact, a pilot program on energy recovery from ener uh, urban, municipal and industrial waste was started way back in 1995. The program that was at that time was made in the collaboration of UNDP and Global Environment Facility and it aims at promotion, development, demonstration, dissemination and adoption of appropriate conversion technologies for both solid and liquid waste through improved waste management and introduction of fiscal and financial incentives. Projects utilizing waste from urban 
sectors or industrial sector for energy recovery is set up in the national program. The overall objectives of the program are number one creation of conducive conditions and for fiscal and financial design to help promote develop demonstrate the energy recovery program and improvement of waste management practices through adoption of technologies for conversion of such waste into energy and third promoting the setting up of projects utilizing waste from urban municipal and industrial sectors. In addition, MNRE had initiated a project which was partially assisted by UNDP and GEF for development of high rate biomethanation process and actually the aim of that was actually in the direction of as a means to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, it has a total it had a total outlay of about 400 million rupees. The project covers scaling validating the full scale demonstration of mature technology. The overall objective of the, that scheme were development of institutional framework at national level to generate necessary awareness and capacities to provide impetus to bioenergy development program utilizing high rate biomethanation process. Second, development of requisite expertise and capabilities in the national and state level institutions including R&D organizations and universities to assimilate and adapt technologies improve applied R&D skills in the field of high rate biomethanation process and to provide technical know-how and assistance in setting up plants using the biomethanation process. Promotion of the use of biomethanation technology and biogas utilization as cost effective means of, of energy generation through demonstration sub projects and the national and local level seminars and workshops promotional campaign training and demonstration and finally development of national master plan and shelf of investment proposals to utilize this important renewable resource through commercialization of the processes. So, for to make this scheme effective it has made use of various financial as well as fiscal incentives. Some major financial incentives for promotion of biomethanation technologies are number one interest subsidy that is 10 percent of the loan amount for the entire loan repayment period subject to maximum capitalized amount of rupees 10 million per megawatt electricity. Then it has investment sub subsidy that is 50 percent of the direct equity stake in projects limited to 10 rupees 10 million per megawatt electricity. Then rupees 1.5 million per megawatt to municipal corporations, urban local body subject to their coordinated action for finalization of clearance agreement for making land available at token lease rent for minimum lease period of 30 years. Then rupees 0.5 million per megawatt electricity to state nodal agencies subjected to their involvement in actions as I had just mentioned. A sum of 2, uh, 2 percent of interest subsidy channelized through lead financial institution as service charge subject to a maximum of rupees 0.2 million per project on reimbursement basis. State electricity boards are also eligible for various incentives such as 25 percent of the cost of equipment for interconnection evacuation facilities, cash incentive for power fed into the grid. Then preparation of detailed project report, technical feasibility report etcetera up to 50 percent of the cost subject to a maximum of rupees uh, 0.2 million. Then financial support of up to 50 percent of the project cost limited to 30 million rupees per megawatt electricity including the cost of land as per revenue records. Then cost sharing of up to 50 percent of the incremental capital cost of power generation system at sewage treatment plants itself. So, these are some of the financial incentives which are there. Then it has also various types of fiscal incentives. The fiscal incentives includes tax benefits. First is the accelerated 100 percent depreciation in the first year. Accelerated 100 percent depreciation means 
any plant or investment made for any plant machinery or equipment in the industry, the depreciation is given at a certain rate every year till the life of that particular thing. But in case of anaerobic digestion technology, the industry can avail 100 percent uh, deduction uh, of the investment made on the technology right in the first year that with this is known as 100 percent depreciation allowance. This is a huge tax benefit. Then also the companies are given tax holiday for 5 years those who are investing in this technology. No exercise duty on gas engine and municipal waste conversion devices which produce energy. Then concessional custom duty of 10 percent for all goods imported by a manufacturer or supplier for manufacture or supply of machinery and equipment to power generating plant. Then concessional custom duty that is sometimes 20 percent custom duty plus 13 percent contravailing duty on the project report itself, project import. So, these are the some of the fiscal incentives which are provided for the biomethanation technology. So, what we conclude finally is we have traditionally an anaerobic process which was used mainly for the concentrated waste such as uh, sludge generated from the aerobic biological treatment process. This was used in almost all the sea waste treatment plants in 1950s, 60s and 70s because anaerobic process was found to be net energy giving and does not require huge amount of oxygen for the process uh, stabilization. It was seen that anaerobic process has many advantages and one of the significant advantage which anaerobic process offers is the energy production. This advantage of anaerobic digestion technology has created interest for the large number of research institutions to engage themselves in further development of this technology starting with the first uh, energy crisis uh, from 1973 onwards. We have seen that by the year 1990 we have some type of technological configurations which are available where we can directly treat the high, medium and low strength wastewater through the anaerobic process route. This actually start replacing the aerobic technologies which are energy intensive. So, we have discussed that almost all these technologies work ba on the basis of cell immobilization technique which helps to increase the solid retention time without increasing the hydraulic retention time. So, uh, cell immobilization techniques helps in development of the high rate anaerobic treatment technologies. Then we discuss various types of high rate treatment technologies, their fundamental principles of working and how they work and amongst these we have find that anaerobic fixed film fixed bed reactor, anaerobic fluidized bed reactor, a flow anaerobic sludge blanket reactor are most widely used. Each of these technology has their own advantages and limitations. Then we have hybrid technology which is a basically a combination of fixed film reactor and USB reactor which takes advantage of both type of systems. In India, many industries are now using anaerobic high rate anaerobic treatment technologies for treatment of their uh, effluent and nowadays even the sewage is being treated by most of these technologies. Under various river action plants, large number of sewage treatment plants have the installation of such type of high rate anaerobic treatment technologies. The penetration of high rate treatment technology has not been just out of the interest or energy crisis, but government has also made concreted efforts towards the promotion of these technologies and basic model which the government has adopted is the two pronged approach both in terms of financial incentives as well as fiscal incentives. Financial incentives is, is in terms of sharing of the revenue, uh, sharing of the cost of the project up to 50 percent. It also includes the interest subsidy, it also includes the purchase of electricity and various other financial incentives which are given. Fiscal incentives in terms of concessional excise duty for imports, then tax holidays, tax benefit tax benefits, 100 percent accelerated depreciation on plants and equipments and various types of fiscal. So, combination of financial, fiscal and concreted efforts towards the R and D and support to various research and academic institutions has, uh, has been one of the phenomenal factor for the growth of high rate anaerobic treatment technology and its adoption. So, as of now many industries especially food processing industries, tanneries, distilleries, 
uh, are using high rate anaerobic treatment technologies for their treatment. With this, uh, I, what I can say is that we have broadly aerobic and anaerobic treatment technologies. Anaerobic treatment was initially considered to be only for sludge because it anaerobic process is a slow process, it is a sensitive process and we have large number of installations which has made use of aerobic technologies. But we have discussed all both the forms of technologies in much details in terms of their working principles and mechanism of working. So, uh, in a, uh, we have discussed the methods for removal of organic pollution in the water or waste water. Thank you.